We begin with Canada's buckling health care system. Hospitals from coast to coast are overwhelmed as their understaffed emergency rooms get flooded with sick patients. In Ontario today, a union representing hospital workers says the staffing crisis is having profound and unprecedented consequences. A health care worker will pull into a parking lot and they'll count the number of cars and they know that there's not enough people that are going to be there to fill that shift. So they know already before they even get into the building that they're going to be working short. And it, it, it's like climbing a mountain every day. Uh, uh, you reach a breaking point, and I think that's what's happening to a lot of our healthcare workers right now. For more, we turn to the president of the Canadian Association of Emergency Physicians, Dr. Mike Howlett. Dr. Howlett, welcome to Power in Politics. Hello. So it sounds like from the reports out there that things are rather dire. What are you currently seeing in your hospital? Well, personally, I just finished the fifth, and uh, we were seeing the worst crowding of admitted patients uh, that we've ever seen since I started in 1987. Wow, I mean, that's a pretty significant uh, statistic, the worst crowding you've seen since 1987. If things are that bad for the healthcare professionals on the front lines, what impact are these conditions having on patients? Patients aren't, aren't really able to get... Um, timely enough care sometimes because there are too many different tasks that people have to do in too short a time given the numbers of people that they have to see. Sometimes um, people who are really seriously ill are hidden in amongst people with less serious illness and so it sometimes takes a while till you, you discover their problems. Sometimes people are admitted to hospital but because they're sitting in stretchers and in chairs waiting they uh, they can't get enough attention. And we know that people that are waiting for long periods in emergency departments after admission have a higher mortality rate, there's a higher death rate. And, and we, we see some evidence of that uh, periodically as we're working. Now, Dr. Howlett, the Ontario Council of Hospital Unions is calling for more funding to address staffing issues, or perhaps I should say understaffing issues. Uh, Health care funding was a recent uh, big political issue, but is more money the answer? I would say that investment in the right things is the answer. I think that there has been underfunding in certain critical areas for many years. If you look at how hospital beds have decreased since the 1990s, it's a dramatic change since then. I think if you look at the numbers of nursing staff and physician staff we have in certain critical areas, um, not all areas, but some in particular, that uh, it's certainly an issue. But I would say that if you're going to spend money, it needs to be targeted carefully. Like our own organization has called on the ministers of health nationally to hold a forum uh, to produce actions that will improve the system in a careful and a guided manner with good evidence. Um, we haven't seen a good evidence approach yet, a good population-based approach yet. And, and we're hoping, rather than departments of health taking pot shots at uh, the problem uh, without, without good information, that uh, perhaps we can move towards a, a more rational and a better planned system that actually puts patient safety, patient safety culture first, rather than as an afterthought. You mentioned the need for carefully targeted investments in certain critical areas. Can you give me a few examples of what those critical areas are? Well, critical care nursing is one of those. Uh, we are a very short sure critical care nurses across the country but for emergency departments and in ICUs, et cetera. And, and as a result, we're having to hire more and more junior nurses who haven't had the opportunity to develop their skills yet. Um, we're also losing uh, a lot of our critical care senior nursing staff as well because they take up other jobs which are less stressful and less risky and with less burnout. So um, that's one area. With physicians, there's a, a general shortage of emergency physicians across the country. We estimate at a, around 1,500 or so, and it's going to increase uh, and not decrease. At our own hospitals here, we have had a significant difficulty hiring well-trained staff. And there just aren't enough uh, training positions in particular for those groups. Um, and, and so that needs to be targeted in a way that gives them the skills that they need for those particular roles. 
Dr. Howlett, uh, earlier in the interview, you referenced the overcrowding. Some Quebec emergency rooms in the Montreal area are reporting over 200% occupancy in the province, even recently asked the public to avoid ERs unless it's absolutely necessary. What kind of consequences do you see that level of occupancy having on our health care system? Well, it means that the, the, the people who are occupying those spaces can't get enough of the type of care that they need or in a timely fashion. I mean, five years ago, we would have uh, 25 nurses taking care of say 200 people a, a day in the emergency department. And we'd have 12, 15 people that are waiting for admission. Well, now we have 50 people or 60 people or more waiting for admission. And we have the same 25 nurses. And we have the same physician complement. I mean, that, it, I mean, it's self-evident that people will not be able to get to all the things that they need to do. So it sounds like you're saying this will have a pretty significant impact on regular people's everyday lives. How can the system continue to function with this level of strain that it's currently operating under? Well, what happens is people try to, you know, have makeshift solutions. They try to find ways of temporizing. We put patients in hallways on stretchers or hallways and chairs. We uh, we do what we can uh, to see people and, and uh, make sure that they get adequate care. Um, we uh, try to advocate for better circumstances and better, um, you know, information uh, for making policy decisions. We ask for more long-term care uh, funding and and so that we can get people out of hospital into appropriate care spaces. Um, we just want some rational thinking in the way things are planned. And that's why we proposed this national forum, because we don't think they're always listening to the right voices. Finally, Dr. Hallett, what does the current state of emergency departments across the country say about the health of the rest of our health care system if you had to diagnose the system itself? How would you do it? The emergency department and the emergency department care has always been the canary in the coal mine, if you will. It's always been a signpost of how well the rest of the system is doing. And, and it's basically a symptom of a larger problems, um, larger waiting times, larger acute care, uh, uh, lack of spaces, lack of uh, care and long-term care for people with uh, chronic medical problems and severe functional problems. So um, there, there are related areas um, that are having big problems that show up in the emergency room as problems. Um, and uh, part of it leads to the overcrowding problem. Part of it leads to the staffing issues and staffing risk and staffing problems. Um, it, it's a snowball effect when the rest of the system is not functioning well. Uh, the last Part of it is the safety net, and the, the safety net is tearing holes. Is there any cause for optimism, even though conditions may be that dire? I think this is the first time I've seen in the last 20 years where the public is starting to realize that there are issues, and it really takes the public understanding that there are issues to encourage the people in power and people in charge of the system to want to look for good solutions. Up till now, there hasn't been that kind of pressure. Um, and it's kind of late, uh, which is too bad, but at least it's starting to, it's starting to create uh, enough interest and concern that perhaps people will start to, to examine the issues and produce you know, a better system. I mean, if you look at the airline industry, it, it anticipates problems and it, develop systems to avoid uh, bad outcomes. In healthcare, we've, we just haven't done that yet. We haven't planned our systems to be able to prevent problems. We wait till they happen and then we chase them. Um, and those types of solutions should be out there, but it takes a different kind of thinking. It takes a different attitude. It takes a, a concern for people first and foremost, rather than a concern for, um, for instance, uh, financial bottom line. I mean, sometimes governments say, well, we've managed to save money. Well, if you manage to save money on the backs of other people's um, 
suffering, I don't think that's a good thing. All right, Dr. Mike Howlett, we do have to leave it there. I really appreciate you taking the time. Go home and get some rest. Thank you.